So when will we use internal standards? Well, there are times where the best way to do the measurement is just go ahead and add something to your sample and you can set up a set of ratios. A great example of that would be if you're doing a chromatography experiment on the alcohol content in beer. And this is actually a classic experiment that we used to do uh, in one of the classes I used to teach. Now what you're doing in that, you're injecting a sample of beer that you've spiked with some propanol. Or we've also got some data for wine and for vodka. Now what ends up happening is at time equals zero, this axis is time, this is just some signal, and it turns out that from day to day this signal is going to be terribly inconsistent, but it'll work well within a single run. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and inject our sample in here. Over time what's going to happen is first I think ethanol will come out of there, then the propanol will come out of there, and they're going to give a peak as any of the evaporated ethanol comes off, goes through our detector, and gets detected. And it trails back off as it's totally flushed out. Then the propanol, which is heavier, comes out after that and gives us in a second set of uh, peaks here. And what they've done is they've just taken the area underneath the peak in terms of the signal to stand in as some sort of a signal measurement. So you can see the ethanol, this is in peak height, not in uh, area, but I've got data both ways. So we're using that as our signal, just arbitrary signal. Our ethanol peak height is blah, and our propanol peak height is blah. When we set up these different ratios, so this is all using knowns. These are known concentrations. So we made it to have all these ratios. The idea of that is that when we sub and when we divide them, so we have the ratio in area of ethanol versus propanol as our new signal. We have our volume ratio of ethanol versus propanol. So it turns out that when you don't have very much ethanol present, you have a lower ratio for the ethanol. Not a surprise. We're keeping a continuous amount, a constant amount of propanol. As we add more and more of the ethanol, we see that its ratio starts going up and its signal starts going up. That seems reasonable too. In other words, as we add more of this into our standard, this stays the same, this gets bigger. Looking at this ratio, now we've got a set of ratios so we can go ahead and take a beer sample, add in the exact same amount of propanol. You can see that these numbers are all pretty constant. So we have the same amount of propanol. We divide it the same way for our unknown. And by working out these ratios, we can solve to find out how much alcohol is in beer. That's the idea of this experiment. And you can see here that by calculating our volume ratio, we were able to plug it into this equation. From that, we were able to get this experimental volume percentage. And we could compare that to what was listed on the label. Now that said, remember, this was from an undergraduate teaching lab. Presumably, these guys hopefully had more experience. And so sorry, these guys hopefully had more experience when they labeled the bottle so that they were in compliance with the FDA and the ATF. I also want to point out that wine, it's not that you're having problems when you buy your bottle of wine and it's not really the ABV it's supposed to be. We were using the small cheap bottles that were screw tops and we were keeping it in the bench drawer until each group would work through it. Probably what happened is the alcohol had evaporated off some and so we were seeing a lower concentration than originally was labeled for. In vodka, we saw the same thing, but we saw less evaporation. Not a surprise, those tiny little wine bottles have metal screw tops that aren't quite as airtight once opened. And the vodka bottle had that nice uh, plastic cap that you could screw down very tightly, and it had the foam insert, just like we do with chemistry. That's the basic idea of an internal standard, though. We add in some continuous variable of one of our analytes while comparing it to an additive that we're going to keep constant and everything. We then add this additive to our unknown. We take the ratio over here, I'm sorry, the peak height over here. The ratio of these to the ratio, uh, let's just uh, find where it's at on the uh, slope, gets us to our previously built ratio of ethanol to propanol. And then when we look that up, that gets us back to the actual concentration. 
That's the basic idea of an internal standard.